Hello everyone, this is Brad Chappell with DomainSpoon.com. This is a quick video to explain a little bit more about the Domain Spoon application. Most people will start on the home screen and log in from here, so I'll just show you how that works. Go to DomainSpoon.com, go to the login button in the upper right, and you'll just log in with your email address and your password and you'll be taken to the first screen of the application interface. Each page or section of the application serves a very specific purpose. Every stage is meant to mimic much of what you would do manually in searching for quality expired domains but the domain spoon tool is used to skip over many of the most time-consuming parts of the process allowing you to sort through thousands of domains in a very short period of time. And before I get too far into this, let me also just start out by saying that if you're confused right now as to what I'm talking about or wondering why someone would need to sort through thousands of domains, please go to Hayden Miyamoto's blog at nohatseo.com. The processes learned there are really what the Domain Spoon application is based on. And let me just go ahead and show you that really quickly. If you go to nohatseo.com forward slash blog and click on link building and then scroll to the very bottom of that page, click on older entries and then scroll again down to the very bottom of that page you can see the two videos that I'm talking about. There's a video on this page how to find a PR5 plus expired domains for $9 part one. And there's also another video on this page, how to find PR5 plus expired domains for $9 part two. Watch those videos and then come back to the Domain Spoon application or watch those videos and then come back to this video. You, you'll understand a little bit more about what I'm talking about when I'm talking about sorting through domains or you know the different parts of the process of finding expired domains. So back to the Domain Spoon application. Each stage of the processing can either be done consecutively or done separately. There are some advantages to doing this separately, which I'll get to in a moment. But first of all, let's talk about this page that we're on, the parse page or the upload page. You can either paste in 5,000 domains with just a simple copy and paste into this box right here, or you can upload more domains in a text file by using the file import feature here or here. Right now, while we're testing the application, we've limited the file upload feature to 10,000 domains, but we will be raising that limit in the near future. As for what type of URLs to upload, you can use whatever URLs you normally export out of Xenu Link Sleuth. You know, the ones that come back with no such host. And I'll just show you an example of that exported file here. This is an example of the type of file that you would export out of Xenu. This is sorted, obviously. These are all together right now. So you can easily find the URLs that say no such host. Now, if you take a good look at the column on the left-hand side, you'll see that these URLs are very, very messy. There's some EDU domains uh, that we could probably, you know, get rid of. There's also some email addresses in here. There's subdomains. There's subpages that we would need to get rid of. We would really need to clean all this up if, if, we, were to, if we were to process through these domains. Well, luckily the domain spoon application does all of this for you. You can paste those domains directly into the application just like they are and I'll go ahead and show you how that works. I already have those domains pasted into a text file so these domains are exactly what you were looking at in the Excel spreadsheet that I just showed you. Now the application will automatically parse through the URLs and find the root domain names, filter out the unregisterable domains such as the edus and the .govs, and then it'll filter out the duplicate domains and remove those so that the application isn't checking the same domain twice. 
When you first upload a batch of domains into the application, you'll be prompted to name that job or name that batch of URLs. This will come in very handy when you want to use the history feature located here and we'll get to that later. But the upload process is designed to be very, very quick. In fact, in our testing, it only takes about two minutes to upload a file with 100,000 URLs up into the application. And I'll just show you how that works. We've got this long list of very, very messy domains. We'll scroll down to the bottom and just click Upload. And as I said before, we're asked to name this job or name this batch of URLs. And we'll just call this test. And just like that, it's done. And all of those URLs are uploaded into the application now. Once the upload process is complete and we're left with a good list of registrable domains, they're moved to the next screen the availability screen or the next the next section or the next uh, stage in the process which goes through and checks the domain availability which we'll get to in the next video